everybody, my name is Inspiraspir, and today I will be showing you how to install and properly work with the new Ableton MIDI extension device by Exihe. Now, a lot of people have asked me how to get this to work, how to install it, how to fix certain glitches that are involved with it, and I figured I would make a video to walk you through exactly how to download it all the way through to get it to working, you know, in your covers. I'm assuming most of you guys already know what this is. If you don't, I will link you to a video in the description below that will tell you exactly what this does. But this video is more so on how to actually get it to work. So I'm going to take you through the basics. I'm going to go ahead and download it. I will link you guys to this page right here and then you can go ahead and click on this link right here to download your file itself. Now I'm using a Mac. Everything I'm going to tell you guys is um. I know exactly how to work for a Mac, but if you have a Windows, they have detailed instructions down here as to where to put these folders for Windows. But for Mac, I will walk you guys the exact walk you guys through the exact places to put everything. So once this downloads, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. If your computer doesn't automatically uh, unzip files when you download them, you need to unzip it. And then I'm going to put this on my desktop, just so we can easily have access to it. And then I'm going to open it up. And we're going to notice there's three folders within here. And there's the readmes too. But we're going to mainly focus on these two folders. The one on top is just a demo to show how this project, or this device actually works. Uh, you can look through it if you want, it might be useful, but I'm only going to be using these two folders. Now, we need to make sure these folders are in the right places. So this one right here, the MIDI extension version 1.0, we're going to go ahead and copy it, and we're going to move this to Macintosh HD. No, sorry. We're going to go to your users. This one goes to your users, music, Ableton, user library, presets, MIDI effects, max MIDI effect and we're gonna paste it within this folder. In order for this to show up, you have to have Max for Live. That's the only way for this device to work. So if you don't already have Max for Live, go ahead and install that. It's free if you have Ableton Suite. And so we're gonna download this, and then you'll notice that this uh, folder will be there. And then you're gonna plop this MIDI extension version 1.0 into that folder. Now we're gonna go ahead and delete everything except for MIDI extension. I don't think it'll work if you have the stuff in brackets. That's just something I've noticed before. So that's in the right place. Now we're gonna go back to the, our, our, the device we downloaded and we're gonna look at this MIDI X folder. We're gonna copy that and this one's gonna go into your Macintosh HD applications, Max, like the ver Max and then your version number and then you're gonna paste it within that folder. And you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna delete the stuff within the brackets. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look into Ableton. We're gonna start up a new project to show you guys how this works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that in this left side you hit add folder, and then you go to those two folders you just copy and pasted. So for this one, remember the Macintosh applications, Max, and then this folder and click open. I have already done that here as you can see. And then uh, I'll just go ahead and show you guys. So you hit add folder and then you go to there, your MIDI X, hit open. And then you go to your, your other one. So music, Ableton, user library, presets, MIDI effects, max MIDI effect, MIDI extension. What this will allow you to do is it'll give you shortcuts and, and basically, in essence, to everything that you will need in order to work with this device. So, you'll notice that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and one, one thing. I'm gonna set up my MIDI track for my launch pad so it's ready to play and everything. You'll notice within your MIDI extension folder, there's two 
things you're going to want to notice. The one says MIDI extension master and one says MIDI extension. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop this master, the MIDI extension master, onto our MIDI track. What this is, is um, you have to have, it controls all of your light effects that you'll put after it. You have to have this somewhere within your MIDI track in order for this device to work. I recommend putting it in front, the first thing you do. The next thing you want to do is go to MIDI effects and then click MIDI effect rack and drag and drop it onto here. This is where we will put all of our light effects. If you've had experience making launchpad covers before, this will look familiar to you in that you have used chords and arpeggiators and velocities. But now, instead of doing all that stuff, we're going to be using MIDI files. We're going to go ahead and right below the master, there's going to be a MIDI extension. We're going to drag and drop that into our MIDI effect rack. What this does is it allows us to drag and drop MIDI files right here into this little square that says MIDI. And then every time we press the button that it corresponds to, for example, if we choose this button, every time we press this button, uh, it would be enabled, that when we put in the MIDI file, it will activate those lights when you press that button. Meaning, you can make MIDI lights and then trigger them with a button, which is why I think this goes hand in hand with my new tutorial series where I'm teaching you guys how to make MIDI light shows, like light effects, in that you can just save your MIDI clips and then drag and drop them into here, press the button, and then it's good to go. So if you're starting a new project, it might be a good idea into your MIDI X file to create a new folder to contain all of your MIDI uh, files. So we're going to go ahead and name this uh, something like that. Now, it is crucial that you do not have any spaces within your folder name. Any spaces. You have something like this with a space right there, it will not work. You'll get stuck in this glitch where it will infinitely load your effects and then you'll have to force quit Ableton and it will not work. You have to make sure there are zero spaces. You can either use underscores, or maybe dashes, or nothing, but do not have any spaces within your folders. So this is where if you make some sort of MIDI effect, pretend that's the effect you want for whatever reason, you can make your MIDI effects, which I will teach you guys in the future how to make advanced MIDI effects. You can right click on your MIDI clip itself and then do export MIDI clip, save it whatever you want, and then you can go into your MIDI X folder and then you can put it in that folder that you just made with your all of your other projects, save it, and then you'll notice that it's right here under your folder. And what that allows us to do is we can drag and drop that MIDI file onto our button and it'll make that weird effect that we just made. So now you can do this, you can copy paste, do it with other buttons, put in any other MIDI effects you want. You're allowed to use it from different folders and stuff, this is just more of an organization tactic. So now we have our effect track that we want. We can go ahead and we can hit save down here on the master device. And we can call this whatever we want. And then we can save it within our folder if we want, our project folder. Uh, I'm not entirely certain if uh, having spaces within this name also causes a glitch, but I would definitely avoid it. There's no point in having it. You can use underscores dashes, anything. So I would avoid spaces, save it within your folder, and then that's good. And then we can say, wow, this session is really great. So we're going to save our Ableton session as whatever we want. I'll just save it to my desktop. You can save it wherever you want. Now, 
I haven't had a lot of people ask me exactly what the loading button does. If you just have this right here, and you try and hit load, and then choose uh, your from your MIDI X file the thing that you want, nothing will happen. This is the thing I saved as my... Nothing will happen. And that's because this doesn't load up your MIDI effect rack. What it does is, is it looks at whatever MIDI effect rack is on the same track it's on. It looks through each individual branch, each, maybe you have different chains, each pages. It looks at each light, and then it will put in the MIDI file that you saved it as. So in order for that to work, you have to have... Sorry, you have to have your MIDI effect rack there. So next time you load up your Ableton session, and I'm not going to save it because I got rid of the effect rack. Next time you load up your session, you'll notice your effect rack is here, as, as well as your master device, which is great. But you will notice that your MIDI files are gone within here, which isn't a bad thing, because if you saved your file, you can load it up, you can go into here, and you can click load and it put back your MIDI files exactly where you left them. And then you can keep playing exactly how you want it to. One thing I've noticed uh, is you cannot put folders within your project folder. So you want to have a folder, call it like your first drop, and then you put in your MIDI effects within there. It won't work, I've noticed that. You just have to have them all in one big, glob within your folder and so to summarize basically once everything's installed once your folders are in the right places you need to have your MIDI master effects or your device on your track followed by your MIDI effect track put in your individual MIDI extension devices put in your MIDI files make sure once you're happy you hit save hit save often. You'll be sad if you don't. And then all you have to do is make sure you save your Ableton session and everything will be fine. Then the next time you load up Ableton, your MIDI effect rack will be here, but your MIDI files won't be. And that's when you hit load on your master device and it'll put everything back in its place. Hopefully that solves some problems people have been having. Make sure your folders are on those places I told you to. I uh, told you to put them. Make sure you do not have any spaces within any names of your MIDI files or your folders. And then as far as loading goes, you just make your light effects like you would. Make sure you save your master device. Make sure you save your Ableton session. And then the next time you load up Ableton, just have faith that it will work once you hit load. So I think that'll be it. Hopefully this clears up some things for some people. Um, and hopefully you guys found this useful. I think that will be it for this time. Thanks for watching.